G'day folks, uh, today Dwayne and I have got Makita's plunge saw mm. and a Bluetooth cordless vac to go. So this is the DSP601. Yep. And this one I can never remember the damn thing, DVC864L. These are both twin battery units. So you need yep. two 18 volt batteries yes. because they are 36 volt tools. Yep. They won't work with just one battery. No. Nope. Um, all right, so yeah, uh, we're gonna go test these. Yep. And come back and tell you what we think. Yep. So um, this has been used for a fair few different projects. Yep. Um, things like uh, doors. Yep. You had to shorten up some doors at work. Yep. Yeah, had to trim up some doors. That was the first project actually. So Dwayne and I have never owned a plungy. No. You've used other ones, uh, but I, I hadn't. So to me, it was all a little new. Well, we're very attached to table saws. Both of us own good table yep. saws, and and. I've always been happy with that. Yes, and also happy with dropping a straight edge and clamping a straight edge down Easy. and using, I used to use jigsaw heaps uh, or circ saw. So, sure. so this was new to us and I'm thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. Yeah, yeah, you've certainly um, been raving about it. I have raved it about, about it a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So look, the first job I did was trim the bottom of a, uh, a door up at work. Uh, and it was good for me in that you pull that off and ordinarily I will get the straight edge away. This thing, I literally marked it, dropped the, the track down, yeah. hooked a dust extractor up, boom, and we're away. It left next to nothing on the floor below it. The dust extraction on this yeah. is superb. So we'll talk about the vac in a few minutes, but the dust extraction on the actual unit, I'm really impressed. Yeah. I expected a bit of more, bit more spray back. Normal circles sort of tick me off because mm. there's always some spraying, itchy stinking eyes. Yeah. But um, this is quite impressive. Yeah. So for guys who are doing internal type stuff, absolutely ripper. Yeah, that's great. Um, I guess one of the things that people are going to want to know straight away because some batteries is yes. does it have enough power? Yep. Um, to check that, we we got a big thick piece of uh, I think 45 mil Merbu. Yep. Um, Big expensive piece of timber, actually. It is expensive piece of timber, <laughs> um, and uh, and very tight grain, very hard timber, quilla. Yeah, it's known as quilla elsewhere. That's yep. an exotic timber. Yep. And we did that, so we ripped a couple of straight strips. Yep. Just to see, and you'll hear it in the in the footage. It groans a little bit. Yeah. But nowhere near as much as what I thought it would, because that is dead set hard timber. It is really hard. So we also did the forty five cut, because in forty five are important. On this piece of Merbu here, so this is a thick bit of decking Merbu. Yep. Uh, ripping cut. So we've got to talk about the blade at some point. Yeah. Because that's a spanking blade, specialised uh, blade, yeah. um, specifically for this. Uh, Effy cut or something, I think it's called. Sure. Uh, really, really tidy. So on the 45, it's nice. What I would do want to talk about just quickly on the 45, people, you must use the front and back knob and nip them up. So when you undo it, I think we've got a little bit of footage here. Um, coming up, undo both, but if you only do the top, the front one up, because the back one's a little bit hard to get to, it's a little gnarly, yeah. you need to lift the front of the saw up and actually do it from the back. Otherwise, you'll get a little bit of hinge drop at the back. And I was lazy and went to do it one time with just the front locked off and realised that I need to not be lazy yeah. and actually nip them up. So it's got 45 degree or 48, yeah. and it's a zero cut or minus one, which is really good for just cutting back if you're actually wanting to join some panels and just a little back cut. Sure. So that's handy. That rear um, bevel knob is probably the only thing on it that's a, bit, a little bit kind of tucked away and a bit annoying to get to. Yeah, yep. I reckon maybe a lever lock at the back somehow. Every, Don't know how. Everything else is very ergonomic, very yep. um, intuitive to yep. push and hold. 
The handle's very, cool. Very comfortable. I've even got a little, short little thumb, we reckon. <laughs> we found out over the years that uh, I'm a bit weird. But to drop your hand there, press that, pull the trigger and plunge down, that's sensational. Really yeah. easy to access. The batteries don't get in the way or anything. It's, it's a really nice, easy to use. Yep. Um, now the track as well, we also liked. Yeah. Um, when you set it up, you have to adjust these little cams here down. Yeah, you've got two little cams here on the side. Now, if you don't adjust those, you're going to pop it onto the track for the first time, you're going to get a bit of knock to the left and to the right. Yeah. So you do need to just tighten them up until all of a sudden that rock's gone out of it. Yeah. Then you've got a sweet looking jigger. Then plunge down for your first cut. We did have a guy on Instagram who actually messaged us going, I've stuffed it up so I didn't do the cams. Yeah. And he gouged a tiny bit out on the inside of his track. And had a... Uh, the, the rubber on the side would have looked terrible. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I, I think it did look terrible. So, yeah. um, so you do need to do those. Also, noting, sorry, I should have said it before, with your 45 degree, you've got a little locking slide here. So it looks like literally a washer underneath. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, just slide it out and it locks under the track because at 45 degrees, the thing is so heavy and it will drop over. Yeah. Nothing you can do about that. No, and that's, you know, cutting bevels on any handheld unit is never that great. No, it never, never quite feels the same, does it? No, no it's bizarre. That's, that's why we always use table saws for it. Yeah. Um, now, the so the adjustment for the bevels, really clear numbers. Yeah, um, super. White on black. Yep. Same with the height adjustment over here. Yes, you can see that nice and easy. It's got an easy twist knob. To and they're quite raised too, so they're not. it's not just like drawn on, it's going to wear off. No, it's going to stay on for ages. Yep. Um, so height adjustment's really easy as well. Although it does drop instantly as soon as you turn the yeah. knob, so if you're looking to go back to the previous depth, yep. you're going to have to pay attention. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of to be I expected. Wonder, yeah, it probably is, but I wonder if at some stage maybe they can do like a, a little popping indent for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Something like that. Just so as you feel, it just positively goes 20. Just so if I go, well, I'm ripping through 18 mm. mil, drop it down to the 20 and it can run through all the time. That's good. You do have the height of the track, so you're going to take that into account. Anyway. It's good and it's really functional. Yeah. Uh, I just found it a little clunky sometimes. For sure. This little blue knob here, or slider, whatever you want to call it, that is simply for when you want to change your blade. So take your batteries off, of course, press this down, and you actually just actuate this little blue thing. It holds the blade down so you can actually get to the hex key inside there. Exactly. So it's got nothing to do with the cutting, the depth, anything like that. That's right. There's also a little uh, lock at the back here. Um, which just locks, I don't know what you call it, uh, like a, a depth stop. Um, oh, I can't remember what they called it. Something like that. Yeah. And all it does is it locks it down so that it stops at about two or three mil cut depth. Yep. Um, just for a scoring a sheet, if you yep. want to do a really neat cut. Yep. Um, so that your top looks really Score finished. first, yeah. So you just pop it in and it'll yep. lock it down at that or so it. So it's got a little red ring around it, you can't miss it. Yep. Um, so yeah, the features are really nice on it. Yep. Um, nothing feels like it's going to break off. It feels like good quality plastics and everything yeah. seems tough on it. The base is super tough. And Makita are known for decent bases are too. These magnesium, so. do you reckon? These bases. Yeah, it's going to be magnesium. Same sure. with the same with the uh, yep. blade guard. Side and positive. Yep. Uh, what you have, it does come with a fence. So you got the front and the rear. You can do put a fence in front or back. Yep. Um, has got variable speed. I didn't use the variable speed on sure. a job. Yep. Um, I did hit the trigger and dial it up and down. But me personally. Probably wrong, but as we know, I run everything flat knackers. What speed does this go up to? Have I got you there? I'm going to say 6,500 RPM, and it's probably wrong. I think it is over 6. Is it? Yeah, I think it was six, Okay, two, we might annotate three, that. Something like that, yep. I'm, I'm guessing 6.5, but I've never won tats, so my number settings <laughs> is pretty bad. Couple of battery indicators here as well. Yep. Uh, bit of an anomaly. I've, I've noticed that number 2 seems to drop first. Okay. So Dwayne and I were chatting, I'm like, oh, it must... Must start off battery two and then kick into or something like that, but you don't think that that can be the case. Well, it's a thirty-six volt unit, so it it sh you know, and it can't use one battery at a time, so it has to be drawing them together. Okay. Otherwise, it's not getting thirty-six volts. Yeah. So I, I don't know why it's doing that. So oh, I don't know. Look, I, strange. Yeah. Every time I use it, I do have the batteries fully charged because obviously in our testing phases, I can't have negatives and go, oh, but maybe my battery's almost dead. So mm. these things constantly go and change and I charge. I use them when they're topped up. So. Sure. Uh, but anyway, so the battery indicators are at least there, unlike some stinking tools with some brands. You have to pull the battery off to look on certain tools. That kills me. That is right in your eye line. I love it. Yes, yeah, for sure. Um, also got Bluetooth on it, so that's where we bring up the vac that this is paired with. Yep. We'll go through the vac pretty quickly, but what I want to say is the Bluetooth is sensational when it works. You hook the hose up. As I hit the trigger here, the vac's behind me. This thing tells this thing to turn on, yeah. whiz bang, all goes. 
The only thing I've found, when you pair it up, the next day or two days later I come out and I've got to pair it again. Uh, it doesn't happen mid-job, it doesn't drop out. Mm. So I don't know if I'm only supposed to take one battery off and, and have another one on while I take that off so it doesn't... That doesn't seem right. I don't get it. So if you've had this happen and you've got an answer for it and I'm the idiot, that's okay, let us know, be gentle. That is the most likely scenario. <laughs> Get out. Uh, or maybe Makina will actually comment and say, but uh, it did drop out a bit. So what I've turned to doing half the time is when this is on the floor, I flick my foot behind me and I hit the big button there. Yeah, which is a great button, by the way. Oh, it's a massive button. I really like it. It what works a, well. What a great idea for a... Uh, I don't like the idea of having to press a particular little round circle no. here for it. Why not do a dirty big button? Well, big vacuum, you know, vacuum cleaners, they always have buttons that you can reach with your feet. Yeah. Why don't... Ve well, this is not a, a wet dry vac. No, it's not this, a wet dry vac. It's not a vacuum cleaner. No. Yeah, dust extractor. So, just quickly on that, they have, I think, one of the best heads you've seen around come on a dust extractor. That made me first off think this is going to be a wicked vacuum cleaner. The, the head, I think, promises more than what it delivers as far as the vacuum cleaner. On carpet, it's only seventy four cfm. Yeah, two point one meters cube per minute. Yep. Um, so it's it's not a big vacuum cleaner. I think I was thinking the wrong thing. It's it's a dust extraction. I think that's a little bit misleading almost. That, yep. that head. Yeah. Maybe that's from a, a sort of higher output unit. Yeah. Just sort of or maybe they think stuff. I should have known and only suck up dust off the concrete. I don't know. Maybe yeah, so, but yeah. um, it's it's definitely a dust extraction unit. Yep. No, nothing more than that. Yep. Um, and as a dust extractor, it does its job really well, really nicely. Yep. Eight litre capacity. Yep. Um, only up to 70 dB. It's very quiet. Super quiet, yeah. Um, I uh, I was making the point to Mike before that I, I was asking who's going to buy it because that's about 550 bucks on its own. Yep. Um, I think you're committing four batteries to this system. Yes. Between this saw and this dust strip. Yep. So just to, to have me, it running. Just to have it running. So to yep. me, you're probably going to, most guys are probably going to end up buying another couple of batteries and a t another twin charger to go with this unit. Yep. So the true price of it for me is probably more like 850 or something yep. um, by the time you buy that extra extra gear. Um, so it's a fair investment and I was asking Mike, who who's that aimed at? Yeah. Because it's not aimed at guys who are putting up houses, that's for sure. No. Um, no. Not your framers and your XE type guys. No. But I think, I think we agreed more... Renault guys, DIY, um, uh, your gyms, fix-its, um, uh, more boutique cabinet makers who come in. You don't see many cabinet makers trimming stuff on site now, I don't think. No. I might be wrong, baseboards, that sort of stuff maybe. But in general, it's it's more internal staff uh, for you guys who are doing final touches on site that are going to need this. Probably more expensive kind of boutique work as well, I reckon. Yep. Yeah, you may be right. I, I think the part of the batteries... I agree with you that it's not a cheap unit, but I think the part of the, the batteries having to buy extra batteries is probably a little overstated in that you have a look on our social medias, there's guys with 15, 20 batteries. Sure. People are cordless centric. Not all, I know, but yeah. people are cordless centric now. So they ha they don't have only two or three batteries. That might be a little bit of bias of tool enthusiasts, the type of people that, that might follow us. As yeah, maybe. As well, look, let us know how many yeah. batteries you've got. Yeah. Also, write in here because we'd love to know that info. That's true. So, look, it pairs with it really well. Um, it isn't cheap. No. But it has been stinking convenient for me. Mm. As I said, the first job I did was inside, yeah. dark blue carpet, trimmed a door, next to no cleanup. So, I was pretty happy. It feels really quality when you use it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it is, it it is tidy. Yep. All right, well, that's probably all we've got to say, really. Um, the saw's performed admirably. Yep. Um, it's won you over to track saws in general. Yeah, it has. As we said at the start, I'll just repeat it, we're very big on table saws. We love our table saws, you and I, yep. and do a lot of jobs on it. This, in, in quite a few little projects, has won me over. Yep. One in particular that was already sitting in the trailer, a job I got sucked into, and I realised I hadn't cut the back of this cubby house thing <laughs> off that I had to build, doll's house. I literally laid the track in the trailer and skimmed it right along the back, and it was dead set perfect. To do that another way, it'd be painful. Yeah. So this was, it was perfect. Yeah, yeah, so, sure. um, yeah. All right, well, we, we want to hear what you guys have to say about it, especially if you've had any issues or if you've worked out the Bluetooth system perfectly. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, how many batteries you've got, what you think of getting this set up, would you get the dust extraction as well, or would you just get this? Yep. 
Um, but we think it's a really nice unit. It's one us over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it feels uh, nice and powerful in the in the big stuff as well. Yep. In the hardwoods. So definitely plenty plenty grunty, I think. Yeah, for sure. So um, anyway, please comment below. Tell yep. us what you think. Like the video. Subscribe to us if you can. Yep. Um, hit us up on our socials on Instagram and Facebook. Yep. Hit us up, people. We love chatting. We do. All right. See you next time. See you later.